with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Nani has come back to give praise to God, except this foreigner. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered one of the villages, ten lepers came to meet him. They stood some way off and called him. Jesus, Master, take pity on us. When he saw them, he said, Go and show yourselves to the priests. Now as they were going away, they were cleansed. Finding himself cured, one of them turned back, praising God at the top of his voice, and threw himself at the feet of Jesus and thanked him. The man was a Samaritan. This made Jesus say, Were not all ten made clean? The other nine, where are they? It seems that no one has come back to give praise to God except this foreigner. And he said to the man, Stand up and go on your way. Your faith has saved you. <coughs> the Gospel of the Lord. He's <coughs> walking through simple villages and meeting very simple people. And that's when he meets the ten lepers. They stand at a distance because they are regarded as unclean. In those days, all the lepers were forced to go out of the community and live outside through begging. And whenever they met anybody, they were supposed to shout, unclean, from afar. They were not supposed to come close to anybody. They usually moved together in groups, begging, avoiding contact with normal people. No wonder when the lepers met Jesus, they are quick to seize the opportunity and they shout, Master! Have pity on us. The response is very touching actually because they don't say heal us. They just say, look at our situation. Just have pity on us. And Jesus, in response, is also curious because all, he's, all he says is that go show yourselves to the priests. He sends them back to the community. The healing then happens on their way back to the community. We can imagine the excitement, the disbelief of discovering that these lepers, lepers had been cured. Now they could go back to their communities, to their families, to their friends. Now they could reclaim their rightful places in community. But in the middle of the excitement, they all seem to forget about the person who actually healed them, except one of them. And it is significant, actually, that when the leper comes back to Jesus, Jesus asks a very interesting question. He says, ten were cleansed, were they not? Where are the other nine? It seems here that Jesus was actually expecting these ten to come back. And indeed, where were the other nine? Perhaps after showing themselves to the priests, they rushed off home to meet their families and friends and celebrate their homecoming. And yet, why does Jesus want them to come back? Does he want to enjoy being thanked? To feed his ego as a miracle worker? Perhaps part of the answer to that question is what Jesus says later on when this man comes back. He says to him, stand up and go. Your faith has saved you. 
There's here something that happened to this man which the other nine missed. Jesus says to him, your faith has saved you. Saved. The other nine were cleansed, but not saved. It was this man who came back to Jesus that received the saving, the healing, the, the, the actual healing. And also by coming back, this man was the only one who had a closer encounter with Jesus himself. The others only stood at a distance. So after that close encounter, Jesus says to the man, stand up and go. Go, yes, go out there. Be the symbol of God's mercy. Be the witness of God's love. This one leper comes back, discovers a new meaning in healing, in his healing. And he's the only one who is a real witness to God's love and mercy. But the irony is that the other nine, because of their ingratitude, remained what I'd call spiritual lepers and excluded themselves from the grace of God. In 1962, the Jesuits, like Jesus, were moving around working parishes, meeting with ordinary people. And they met a special group of lepers of their time. These were the young people deliberately excluded from the educational system of this country. Education at the time was reserved for the elite white settlers. Jesus started this school for those young people who were the lepers of the unjust educational system. Lepers were not expected to be part of the economic, political, social system and everything. They were not expected to contribute to the medical field, to the academic field, to, to the national leadership structures. Young, talented people were stuck on the grave of their dreams. And therefore, in 1962, God said to Jesus, let there be St. Ignatius College. And behold, St. Ignatius College was built, and the people found it very good. And indeed, St. Ignatius College was good, recognizing the potential, the dreams, the hopes of the talented young people. And behold, today, brothers and sisters, in our midst, we've got doctors, we have teachers, we have lawyers, we have writers, we have judges, we have politicians, we have successful business people, too many to mention. This place became the source of healing, and to, to date, many parents still believe in the healing powers of this place. <coughs> Between 1962 and 2012, more than 3,500 students have passed through this place, cured from the acad academic leprosy. <laughs> but like Jesus, in the Gospels, the Jesuits may ask, the Jesuits may ask, were there not 3,500 who passed through this place? Where are the rest? How many have come back to glorify God and give thanks for the gift of this place? In the gospel, the leper who returned to Jesus came back to establish a relationship with Jesus, recognizing the source of his new status. How many of the 3,500 students came back to St. Ignatius College to give thanks and recognize it as a source of their new status? Where, are they, where were they in 2008? when the college struggled to get the basic things for survival? Where are they today, when the whole infrastructure is begging for maintenance? Look around you. 50 years ago, those buildings were state of the art, but you can't say the same today. Where are they? Today, our culture is such that we find it hard to be grateful because we're busy trying to become more successful. We're busy wanting this and that to make our lives more comfortable, to enhance our social status, there is no time to be grateful. A story is told of a young lady with her daughter who is three years old when they're walking in the streets and there's a vendor selling very nice oranges and the daughter begins to cry for an orange. The mother doesn't have money so keeps dragging this kid along. But the vendor seeing that the girl wanted a, a, an orange took one orange and said, you can have one. And the mother promptly says, I don't have money. The vendor says, no, it's for free to her. And the kid is given this orange. And the mother noticed that the kid did not say thank you. 
So to encourage her to thank, the mother said, what do you say to a man who gives you an orange for free? And the daughter is confused because he's not used to giving thanks. <laughs> he looks at the mother and looks at the vendor, takes the orange, gives it back to the vendor and said, peel it for me. <laughs> You're probably caught up in that. We have a long list of things that to ask God for, but no time to thank. The moment we get another blessing, we're busy asking for yet another blessing. However, the gospel story today is not so much on the nine who did not return. The focus is more on the one who came back. We are gathered here today as a symbol of that one le leper who came back to Jesus in gratitude. Today's occasion is not just about this place, about these buildings. It is not about the good reputation of this school. This occasion is about the, those people who made our dreams come true. This occasion is about our parents who sacrificed the little they had to make us come here. It is about our brothers and sisters who went to less privileged schools because we had to come here. It is about our friends who stood by us when we were here lonely, homesick or broke. It is about our teachers, the cooks, the groundspeople. We need to be grateful because gratitude changes the way we look at ourselves and the way we look at the world around us. Gratitude makes us look at our lives with humility and accept that we are not the sole architectures of our success. Today, we have a unique platform to thank God and to say to God, thank you very much for our families, thank you very much God for our friends, our teachers, the staff we have been working here for decades and for years. And today, I dare challenge you that before you leave this place, find someone you have not thanked for this place. Just say to him or to her, thank you, I went through this place.